Hello everyone. Welcome back to Analog Snippets. In my past video, I described four categories of questions that can be asked to an experienced analog engineer. And then I said that out of these four categories, this second one is probably the most difficult category. And some interviewers spend most of their time on this category. I confess that I used to be one such interviewer. I used to spend most of my interview time on analog fundamentals. Over the years, I have changed my approach and now I try to spend some time on each of these categories. But over the years, I have accumulated a set of questions on analog fundamentals. And I have accumulated some data on where most of the people struggle. So in this video, I'm going to give away my set of fundamental questions that I used to ask. This video focuses on RLC circuits. I will not provide the answers. I will leave it up to you to figure those out. So let's start. I start my interview with a very simple circuit, a simple RC circuit. Consider a simple RC circuit with an ideal R and ideal C. Now plot a step response and the Bode plot with both gain and phase. I don't expect you to write equations to answer these questions. About 90% of people are able to answer this question. But it is the next variety that throws 90% of the people out of the track. And the variety is now replace the positions of R's and C's. Now again plot the step response and the Bode plot. And most people struggle big time with this question. I usually need to give a lot of hints to help the candidate. I can only remember two at most three people who could answer this question without trouble. With some hints, 60-70% people are able to plot the step response and magnitude body plot. But about 90% people still fail to plot the phase. Some people resort to writing equations and then they can make head and tail of this question. Okay, my next variety on the same circuit. Replace input voltage source by input current source. Assume that capacitor is discharged initially and then plot the step response of V out and V1. And a lot of people find this question very difficult to answer. So I approach it in slightly simpler way. Just consider a current charging a capacitor and plot this voltage. And about 60 to 70 percent of people are able to plot this voltage. Then I start to add the more complications. I'll come back to these questions in a minute, but let me mention another question that I sometimes asked. And I asked the ramp response of RC circuit. Assume that the capacitor is discharged initially and the input is a steady ramp voltage. Plot the V out. Again, this is a question where a lot of people struggle. I also asked to plot the current of this ramp response. Another variation of this RAM question is adding this additional branch R2C2. In fact, this circuit was another of my favorite circuit. And I used to ask the poles and zero if your output is at V2 or if it is at V out. Okay, let's now consider the questions on RC circuit with current source as input. So start with plotting V1 with a step current at the input. Then add a register R in series and then plot V1 and also V in. Then add another branch containing R2 and C2 and plot V1 and V in again. Then add a register in parallel with C and plot V1. Here I am expecting a qualitative or approximate waveform. And you need to draw it using your intuition, not equation. Over the years I have seen a lot of people struggling with these kind of questions. So my expectation now is that it's okay if you struggle with it at first, but you should be able to arrive at the answer with the hints I give you. I finish this section on RC circuit usually with a question on noise. Consider this basic RC circuit again. Is there a source of noise in this circuit? If so, what is it? About 60% of people are able to correctly identify the source of noise. Assume that both R and C are perfectly ideal components. 
Then the next questions are what is the total noise and noise power spectral density. I sometimes ask the difference between noise with the low R and high R in the circuit. I often finish by replacing the R's and C's and then asking the noise questions again. Okay, so these are the battery of my RC questions. I have often spent up to one hour discussing all these questions. And most of the time because people struggle with one or other question. I can only remember one or two instances when I could get through these questions in less than half an hour. Okay, let's now move to the next question. Capacitive charge redistribution is one of my early favorite questions. In fact, my first ever video was on this very topic. But people find this question so difficult that I have all but stopped asking this question. So let me give you the gist of this question. Consider two capacitors with some initial charge. One capacitor is 2C charged to 3 volts. And another is C charged to 6 volt but the other terminal is connected to minus 6 volts. Now, if the switch is closed, what is the final voltage? Okay, once you have got your answer, here is the next variation. So this variety is very similar to the first one, only the other terminal of C is now connected to plus 12 volt. Other questions on this same circuit is on the resistance of this switch. What is the final voltage? if the switch resistance is zero versus a non-zero resistance. Are there any losses in this charge transfer process? Compare the losses when this switch resistance is zero and non-zero. See if you can answer these questions. Okay, let's move to the next one. My next question is the general RLC network. Consider this RLC network. What is the gain of this network at DC and at very, very high frequencies. Most people actually are able to answer these two questions. The next question is little more difficult. Tell the number of poles and zeros in this network. Many people are able to tell the number of poles, but several struggle with number of zeros. See if you can figure it out without writing the equation. Some variety on this question is I short one or two resistances and then ask the question again. Say for example R4 is short. What would happen at very low frequencies and very high frequencies? I also sometimes ask to assume some values of these components and plot an asymptotic Bode plot. Considering that at a time only one pole or one zero comes in the picture. Okay, let's move on to my last category of RLC questions. This category of question contains just one register and a current source. Consider a DC current source connected to a register generating a voltage V out. This is a common situation in circuits while generating a local reference voltage. Also consider that both current and resistance have 1% sigma variation. Calculate the sigma variation of V out. Now consider that keeping everything else same, I add another resistance in series to double the V out. Now calculate the sigma of V out again. What if this resistance was connected in parallel instead? And what if, if I add another current source parallel to the existing one? Now again, I don't want you to write equations. Just make use of your intuition and logic. All right. These are all the questions that I wanted to discuss in this video. Try to think about these questions without using equations and then come up with your answers. And then simulate and see if your answers are correct. I will discuss some other analog fundamental questions in my coming videos. So post your comments below and thanks for watching.